yeah. want to talk a little bit about you because you're very interesting. Oh. And, um, you know, um, you do documentaries. And what I know about you, which is not very much, but um, I've noticed that you believe in causes. And there's some causes that you believe in that you make a documentary because it's personal too, that you've experienced it internally and you want to share it. And um, I don't know if you want to share a little bit about some of the documentaries and sure. maybe the health issues and where that yeah. one came um, from. Yeah. I uh, well, it all it all really did start with a with a struggle with my health. Um, at age fifteen, I developed ulcerative colitis, and two percent of the people that have that condition, which is a gastrointestinal autoimmune disorder, um, develop the same situation in their liver. So by the time I was in my mid twenties, I was facing um, a fatal diagnosis without a liver transplant. Uh, that was in the late eighties, and. Um, how old were you then? I was 20, about 25 or so. So at the time, in my mind, when I heard that, I imagined myself sort of continuing a very limited life as a zombie, staggering through the world in a half-human condition because it wasn't that Were common. you in a career of some sort? Of, or I was writing. I had gone to University of Colorado and got an undergraduate degree in literature and then an MA in literature at Northwestern and was uh, a correspondent for a magazine in Colorado and starting to screenwrite at the time. Um, so that's what I was doing professionally. But as you can imagine, we you know when you're, you're slowly dying, basically, um, you know, that becomes your profession in a way. You know, so I was trying totally. to figure out how to stay alive and avoid a transplant. But by the mid-90s, it, it came around. And uh, luckily, um, it's miraculous. You know, I, I remember, uh, you know, it, it was a rough road. The first one didn't work. Um, so were, I had to were wait. Were you single then? Or were no, you... I, my wife and I were married and we had our son was 18 months old. Mm -hmm. So he came with us to Nebraska um, where I um, received a liver transplant. We were living in Denver at the time mm -hmm. and that was the closest center of excellence for transplant. So um, it was a long, hard stretch for all of us. Mm -hmm. um, my son spent six months in a home in suites near the hospital. You know, those kinds of things are hard, and my wife, um, unfathomable that what she had to contend with, being essentially a single mother while taking care of, you know, a single mother with two kids, because that's what I was for the time being. Right. So, you know, you go through, through something like that, and you merge on the other side, and at some point in time, you talk to any transplant recipient, they will describe a keen awareness that they're alive because of society because there's this mechanism that's in place. There's a, there's a mechanism involving altruism of strangers, and there's a mechanism within the medical world that allows that altruism to keep people alive that would otherwise die. And it's an extraordinary thing to experience and see, and you don't really, unless you've been there, it's, it's hard to really describe how it shifts your perspective of the human experience, but it does. And so for me, um, I was, I came out of that and I would watch television or go see movies or advertisement and transplant was portrayed as an eerie science. Um, organs falling out of containers or... So you, um, had, you had two. Yeah. And you were and lucky, two. lucky. Very lucky. You know, it was, a, it was an eight month wait for the first one and then I was hospitalized for four months waiting for the second one. So... And that whole Hold feeling it. of like... Who's who's gonna win? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it was um, it was a hard time. I'm glad, but you know, I'm glad I, you're I, here with us. I'm sorry. I'm glad you're here with yeah, us. Yeah, 20 years later this year. Wow, so congratulations! Pretty amazing. But you know that that this business of what you become aware of is uh, when you feel it, it, and I think it has to do if you have storytelling in your blood, which I do, which runs in our family, goes back many generations. My dad's obviously the most well-known one. But, you know... Robert Redford, yes, for those that don't know. Yes. Good guy. <laughs> um, you know, uh, you see something, a, a mass misperception, and you feel compelled to do something about it. And my feeling was, everyone's making these sci-fi movies about organ donation and joke, dark black humor jokes on TV shows. Wow, like, if anyone has anyone stopped to understand the miracle of donation and the people that do it, what an amazing thing. 
So that led to my first documentary that aired on HBO in 2000 called The Kindness of Strangers. And the whole process of bringing that story out and being part of a, net, a community that's trying to bring that awareness to the public was really satisfying. It never really left me. And I became interested in applying my filmmaking skills towards uh, addressing issues that I felt just a, a pull to bring to a broader awareness. And of course, my timing was fortunate because with the onset of the online universe in the digital age, the ability to use stories and digital content to convey important message skyrocketed profoundly. And so here we are in the golden age of storytelling. And I, I just feel so blessed, you know, to be doing what I'm doing.